Hope you're all still awake. Late Night Mega here. And, well, we're going to show this cutscene that I accidentally triggered last time. Got a little bit too close to it, and then they're like, hey, let's start the cutscene. I was like, hey, let's end the video instead. So, yeah, we have this conversation here with Oleana, Chairman Rose, and BD. He's like... Gather. How will gathering wishing stars solve a problem that's been bothering you? Like, what's what's going on here? The future of the whole Galar region. Okay. So he did beat Hop. He wasn't just lying about that. All right. But BD, with your uninvolved psychic types, you're still a long ways off from being a real threat. What's with that guy in the background that just keeps nonstop laughing? Yes, the Wishing Stars help us Dynamax. So what are you going to do with a massive amount of them? And the stadium is inside this castle. Uh, last time, if you missed the last episode, you're going to want to check it out. We almost lost the Nuzlocke. And we have a almost completely new team. Our starter survived, and that was it. Yeah, that was really insane. Oh, I love this medieval castle design of this town. It's awesome. Alright, so we got a gym challenge here, I take it? Oh, it doubles as an energy plant. Okay. Yeah, here we go with this weird music again. Very nice diagram, I guess. Pardon me there. I've just been overcoming getting sick, and so sometimes I get this, like, tingle in my throat where I have to cough. Other than that, I've been feeling fine. Alright, head towards Route 6. Okay, so we're not actually taking the gym challenge at this particular gym yet. And that is because this is actually the 8th gym. There's a cool symbol up there. Yeah, these people never have anything new to sell us. I, I should stop talking to them at some point. But here's a guy we do want to talk to, the ball guy, and now we have a level ball. Level ball is... it's okay. At some point, you know, wild Pokemon are going to be at such a high level that uh, even if we have level 100 Pokemon, level disparity is not going to be great enough. Maybe it'll still be fine, I don't know. But I've never been particularly fond of the level ball. It's better than some. Oh, you know, seriously? I go to do my hide speed thing. Oh, we have a uh, Leon. But hop. Huh, that doesn't sound like hop. 
Was it because he lost to BD? Well, he's been losing to us like almost every town we get to. We have a battle with him and he loses. Yeah, you can't just give up after one loss. I mean, no one wins it everything all the time. That's just not how life works. Oh, that's convenient, because we're headed towards Route 6 anyways. So yeah, let's go say hi to the gym leader, Raihan. Ignore the bakery shop of horrors. Oh, that, that must have been him. That must be him. Oh, yeah. Seriously, how are they allowed to get away with blocking traffic like that? I've already talked to this guy. I, I don't want what he has. Oh, you already know. Yeah, this is Ryan. I'm guessing that's how you pronounce his name. I don't actually know. I've got all these goofy names. Yeah, I, I'm here to visit the vault. Although I did just mention you're the eighth gym leader. Oh, yay, one of your league cards. Oh, that reminds me, I have to design my league card before... before I start doing... online stuff. Hmm. Okay. Nothing else around here interesting, so we can just head to the vault. Oh, I see you over there. TM29 Charm. That was pretty well hidden. I like that. Uh, that's that's the kind of hidden stuff that I like, where you can still see it if you're at like the right angle, or you see like a little glimmer of it, but yet it's still kind of hidden. It's not like completely hidden out of you, where you have to find it, and it's never ever in your view sight or, or partially in your view sight. So, good design. Watching a wishing star. Okay. A disaster occurs. The two bewildered youths. The youths looking on the sword and shield that stop the disasters. A youth being crowned. So it seems more like there's two heroes rather than just one hero in this uh, story legend. And it's also at this point I'm willing to bet, yeah, I'm going to select the two heroes option because that seems more obvious. I mean, the darkest day thing that those two scenes in the middle look like they depict that. But that one statue we had only had, like, in the other town, it only had uh, Modestoke. It only had one guy holding a sword and a shield. But this makes it look like there's two heroes. And at this point, I'm willing to bet that the uh, sword and the shield are actually the legendary Pokemon. The cover art, box art Pokemon. Just gonna throw that out there. I mean, come on, it's a Pokemon storyline. It's kind of predictable. I like that hoodie he's wearing. It's like he's got 
dragon scales on his stomach and then the the head part is those little hoodie teeth <laughs> looks like it's gonna eat him I'm amused by that I want to get one of those not just for my character in the game but for me in real life that would be that'd be awesome walking around like that Okay, and so Team Yell has stopped their chanting, and we can pass now. Because apparently a couple people from Team Yell get to decide that everybody has to stop advancing and can't go to Route 6. Now, that's, the, that's just the game's way of, you know, having a plot wall and making you go through the plot scenes before going onward ahead. I'm okay with that concept, but some some of the ways they execute those plot walls is just kind of goofy. Now here we have more Team Yell. Team Yell is making sure that this Cobra Pokemon has a nice peaceful sleep. So they're going to do that by standing by it and yelling at everyone who comes by. This makes absolutely no sense. And they don't get to decide who can... Look at this. He's clearly yelling. We're way too loud. What about you? Right now. You're the one stomping around. Oh my gosh, these guys are obnoxious. Oh, no, you know what? Let's just, let's give up here and now, Hop. Actually, yeah, Hop is not acting quite normal here. And in fact, he's not even joining us in this battle. He's just going to let us deal with Team Yell. I thought when Hop appeared this is going to be a double battle, and it's not. The sunlight is harsh. That's not good news for my blue Barrascuda here. Because what sunlight does, I might have missed it as past gameplay me. What it does is it cuts the attack power of water moves by half. And even still, we took away half of its health. Dang, uh, Barrascuta has quite a punch behind it. I like that animation and sound effect of it using dive and going under the water. Just like, oh, here's a puddle of water, flop. <laughs> Alright, Stunky is down, so we got one more to go here. Linoon. Well, that happens to be a normal dark type. So we want to use a fighting type attack. Let's go with this Krogunk. I'm gonna get all gunky. Use revenge. Take down. Perfect. Okay, not perfect because you missed. So I don't get to deal double damage with revenge. I guess it does not matter because you are that weak to it. And also, since uh, Raboot has now evolved into Cinderace, I now have to retire the let's give him the boot catchphrase. But don't worry. I have one for Cinderace. It's like I picked the perfect starter line without really knowing it. And then, yeah, Hop's just, like, he's he's not hopping to it. You know, if Team Yell was actually concerned about waking up the sleeping Pokemon, they wouldn't be yelling and stomping and starting Pokemon battles right next to the thing. Okay, well, oh, cool. We're going to send in Cinderace. It's my ace in the hole. Or ace up my sleeve. Either one works, really.
And oh, upon evolving to Cinderace, uh, we learned Pyro Ball. It's actually a really sweet move. It's 90% accurate, but 120 base power, physical fire attack. That is like exactly what Cinderace wants. That is awesome. Why'd you have to be such a bother? You're the one bothering me. Gee, maybe you shouldn't have had a Pokemon battle right next to it. But after we beat them, they leave with their jumbo paper clips attached to their back. Those weren't paper, they were safety pins. It's still ridiculous. It is a ridiculous look. I would rather be wearing the hoodie that Raihan has rather than going around with a jumbo safety pin through my back. That would look weird. Um, why don't you worry about yourself instead of Leon? I think everyone kind of knows how strong Leon is. You losing one Pokemon battle isn't going to change Leon's strength. Yeah, he's he's got some issues. Uh, w woke up, and he's he's like, and you woke me up. Now I'll go somewhere else. <laughs> well, we're never even going to get to Route Six, are we? Oh my, Opal. Oh, you're one of the gym leaders. Oh, you must be our next gym leader then. And Opal has fairy types. If past gameplay me recalls correctly. Most commentary me knows for sure, but uh, I try to replicate my thoughts as past gameplay me when I'm doing post commentary. And then, of course, I break the fourth wall by constantly reminding everyone that this is post commentary. Hi there. I don't care about your super cute Pokemon. I'm more interested in catching something new because my battle team right now is kind of overlapping in some of its types and attacks. And I need something new to add to the team. There's a Clefairy. Uh, Clefairy has had some big changes since um, Generation 6 started. Uh, Clefairy went from just being a normal type to being a fairy type. I believe it also got a boost in a couple of its stats. And pretty much the way Clefairy's stats are... Bolt Strike! Okay, yeah, Metronome lets you do any thing, any random attack. Bolt Strike, isn't that the, um... Isn't that like Zekrom's signature move? But Zekrom's not in this game. Maybe just maybe... Oh gosh. Oh, this could actually kill him. Ooh. This Clefairy is being an issue. Oh, Trubbish also learned Sludge Bomb already. That's one of the strongest, most accurate Poison-type special moves out there. And he learned that before evolving. I found that weird. Here's a Clefable. Trubbish, you're a little bit too worse for wear. Uh, we do need a poison type, preferably a poison type that can do poison e things. Yeah, look at we got like all these poison attacks on our team. Uh, we're actually pretty weak to water types right now. I don't really have a good answer to water types. Good thing we don't have a water type gym coming up. We already passed that. All right, so we're gonna go with Toxic here and then Venoshock, because what Venoshock does, it will double its power if the opposing Pokemon's poison. And then we're gonna have toxic damage racking up. We're gonna have the scariest metronome. Okay, Thunder Fang. That's not too bad. Uh, and metronome is such a scary move to see in a Nuzlocke because this thing could hit something that's super effective and kills me, or it can just hit things like, it can hit things like Splash and do absolutely nothing. Ladder. 
Okay, so Flatter is going to increase my special attack and confuse us. Well, that's annoying. Oh, and because Clefable has the... I believe it's the Magic Guard ability or Magic... Oh, something. It, its ability is making it so it's not taking damage from Toxic. In case you're wondering why it wasn't. Yeah, I've also seen, like, metronome self-destructs and explosions, and... Ooh, brutal. It's randomly brutal, though. Oh, Poison Jab. That is a move we want to know on Krogunk over Venoshock, because, number one, Poison Jab is a Poison-type attack. Number two, Krogunk doesn't have a way to poison the other Pokémon right now, so having Venoshock on him doesn't... Do well. All right, what do we want to catch here? What is that? That's a Yamask, which I don't really need. Now let's put Stunfisk out in front to catch things because we have Thunder Wave with him. And in case I, I made that other switch there, I put Cinderace as the second Pokemon. I'm going to try to make a habit of doing that. Ooh, that's... That's Helioptile. That is an electric normal type. I'm going to take that. That will give me an electric type Pokemon. So I can now have coverage against water types. Of course, I can't paralyze it with Thunder Wave because... Electric types... Uh, electric types just can't be paralyzed in general. So we're going to have to go about this the old-fashioned way, a.k.a. without status moves. There we go. All right. Um, Helioptile and Heliolisk, they're pretty much your typical electric types that you can expect. High speed, high special attack. Pretty frail uh, in its defenses. All right. So what we want to do... Actually, I don't know what we're doing. What are we doing? Magnet. Oh, we're giving it the magnet because we have a magnet. And let's head down this way. There's an item over here. Ooh, three Ultra Balls. Very nice. Oh, a Durant. Um, yeah. So anyways, I put Cinderace as the second choice, just in case we run into any double battles. That way Cinderace is out there, he'll be... He's, he's like my best Pokemon. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but, uh... Are we gonna show Pyro Ball? We're gonna show Pyro Ball. Oh, this attack is sweet. I love this animation, those soccer kicks and that. I am terrible at soccer. I am not. I have good hand-eye coordination, but I do not have the foot-eye coordination for soccer. And doing that sort of stuff with, like, a soccer ball, no. Now, table tennis. I can do table tennis. But soccer? No. No, it's, it's not going to work. And, yeah, we don't need to learn Bounce. It's a two-turn attack. It would give me a flying-type attack, but... It's a two-turn attack that doesn't even have 100% accuracy. Yeah, two-turn attacks are really not good, because it gives your opponent a chance to switch out into something that can resist the attack, or it gives your opponent the chance to just use a setup move, 
like dragon dance or swords dance and and just uh be like okay i'm ready for your attack you attack him and yeah bounce does actually paralyze the opposing pokemon Although I will say, in Sword and Shield, there are some, even in competitive play, there are some niche uses for some of those two-turn attacks. For instance, when you... It, it might be something that you Dynamax, and then it turns into, you know, a one-turn Dynamax move attack. And maybe that's... Maybe using one of those two-turn attacks is the only way you can get some sorts of type coverage. Another thing you can do with the two-turn moves is you can use them to help stall out your opponent's Dynamax turns. So if you spend one turn in the air or underwater or underground because of your Dynamaxing, uh, well, while your opponent is Dynamax, they're not going to be able to do much. Then, then don't the max moves still hit through that? I think the max moves still hit through that. I know max moves hit through protect. Is that the Togepi flapping or the Togetic flapping in the air there? That's a funny sound effect. It is. That it totally is. You don't do that. Now the reason I'm doing this double battle here, see, double battle. That's why I put Cinderace in second. See, I know what I'm doing. Even if I'm doing things blindly and they happen, and I'm preparing for things that I don't know are going to happen, and then they happen, I'm just that good. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I mentioned it, but we are like, uh, I'm like completely blind in this Nuzlocke now, other than the levels of the gym leaders and champion. And so I went after these doctors here thinking, hey, maybe they'll refill my health after beating them. I'm so used to the doctors in Gen 5. That's not what they're doing. So I will go back and heal up, and I'll meet you here next time.